So the big breaking news for the this week and likely into next week and into the future that most people probably already know is that the debt ceiling deal and the negotiations between President Biden and Kevin McCarthy has now officially been reached. I think what less people have been talking about, however, is that it still has to be approved inside of the House and inside of the Senate, but it is expected to do so and might have even already uh, been approved inside of both the House and the Senate if you are watching this in the future. It is expected to approve inside of the House specifically on Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. So if you're watching this in the future, it might have already been approved. And then it's going to go on to the Senate, which is ex also expected to approve in its entirety. And then they're going to start to implement all of the different plans that, you know, that are within the actual bill itself. So in today's video, what I really want to talk about is the story about what's been happening inside of Congress right now. I want to talk a little bit about what's inside of this bill. Um, if you happen to already know that, I also want to finally end this with maybe some personal thoughts about what this actually means for us into the future. So hopefully there's still something relatively unique to take away from this video by the end. So definitely watch through. So we are going to get started, but as always real fast, before we begin, if you guys enjoy videos like this, remember to smash the like button because it's always greatly appreciated or you can watch to the end to decide, but it is greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing, hitting the bell and feel free to leave a comment about honestly just really anything, maybe what you think about this bill by the end of this video. So with that being said, let's get this video started. So the new bill that's recently been reached by President Joe Biden and Kevin McCarthy is currently called the Fiscal Responsibility Act. We're going to give a little bit of a background information to what's been going on inside of Congress and then we're going to talk about what's in the bill and then we're going to end by giving some personal thoughts about it. But the bill really is that it's a it's a supported by a mix of Democrats and Republicans this time. So unlike a lot of traditional bills where it's basically every Democrat supports it and then none of the Republicans support it, or it's the reverse, you know, all of the Republicans support it, but none of the Democrats support it. This bill actually has a really, really mixed demographic in terms of who actually does and does not support it. Most of the Democrats do support it, and then less of the Republicans support it, but there is still a very, very wide mix of supporters who actually do believe in this bill and those who do not necessarily believe in the policies of this bill. So, for example, some people that support it are obviously President Joe Biden and then Kevin McCarthy because they both are the ones that negotiated this bill. But then you also have other people such as like Chuck Schumer, you have interestingly Mitch McConnell who also supports this bill. So a very, very big blend of Democrats and Republicans. But then you also have certain people that actually interestingly do not support this bill, such as like AOC. AOC is someone that doesn't fully support this bill because she feels that there are certain policies that have been left out inside that she really wishes or believes should be included inside of this bill. The bill is currently paged about six it's uh, sorry. It's currently paged at about 88 pages. I have the actual link of the physical bill, but I know not a lot of people, you know, enjoy reading such very dense text. So that's why I'm going to summarize it for you guys in a little bit. But the big idea is that it's out there. You guys can read it for yourself, and it lists out all of the policies and everything that's currently inside. So now, when it comes to talking about the actual physical bill, this article summarizes a lot of the different points about it. There is an actual physical bill again I'm gonna link it down below but the summary about this bill really is the fact that it's really going to be extending the debt ceiling all the way until January 1st of 2025 meaning what's really nice about this is is that it's going to be able to create a peace of mind for President Biden as he basically is able to you know stay as the president all the way through the elections leaving the next debt ceiling increase or extension uh, in the hands of the next president or depending on who is the whoever is the next president in 2024 or President Biden if he stays as the president during that year because it's still up in the air if he's going to be um, running for president again and also if he's going to win the next presidential election again. So, But whoever's the president in 2025, that is going to be the person that has to deal with it. This bill specifically needs about 60 
um, votes in order to be able to get through, largely because they are not using reconciliation. They're using the traditional method of approving this. Um, so very, very different than what happened with the third stimulus package. If you guys remember when they did use reconciliation, this bill, on the other hand, has to have 60 votes. And it's expected that it does have 60 votes, but we just have to see what actually physically ends up happening, of course. Now, in terms of what else is actually physically inside this bill, aside from extending the debt ceiling all the way to January 1st of 2025, is that there are a lot of policies that are also going to be changed. We're going to basically organize this by what the Republicans, so policies that the Republicans really believe in, and then the policies that the Democrats really believe in, starting with the Republicans. So the policies that are going to be changed inside of this bill are added inside of this bill, um, currently inside, so as in like things that are going to be changing up in our country, is that it's going to rescind $28 billion of unspent COVID relief funds. It's going to eliminate money for IRS funding. It's going to shift money from the Inflation Reduction Act that was approved a couple months ago to the non-defense military funds. So basically the money that's spent for non-military efforts that's where the money is going to be shifted. And then it's going to restart student loan payments because it was, you know, as most of you guys know, it was going through a pause for a period of time when the pandemic had happened. It's also going to create a work requirement and raise it from the previous age of 50, but now to the age of 55. So if you happen to be 55 and younger, you are going to have to fulfill a work requirement to stay on a lot of the programs. And it's going to change certain environmental policies in Side of our country. Now, in terms of what, what's actually in it for the House Democrats or just the Democrats in general, is that it's going to make it so that inside, in, in, in terms of policies that, you know, it's going to favor the Democrats, is that it's going to make it so that there's going to be, first off, no changes to Medicare, leaving both Social Security and Medicaid and Medicare to be the same, which is really, really great news because remember, you know, a lot of the Republicans wanted to end the Social Security or Medicare programs or certainly to reduce it. By this policy, it's going to create no changes so that people that are on Social Security and Medicare can continue collecting money the same exact way that they've always been collecting money for just most of, I don't want to say most of, but but for the most of the recent modern history of America. It's also going to preserve a lot of the climate and clean energy in the Inflation Reduction Act. And most of all, it's going to avoid the debt ceiling issues for President Biden for the rest of his, at least his first term right now at this time. And then there's also certain policies that actually apply to both parties as well, such as like raising the debt ceiling cap. So for example, in 2024, it's going to raise military spending to $886 billion, non-military spending to $704 billion. And then in 2025, it's going to increase the cap for military spending to $895 billion and non-military spending to $711 billion dollars so 711 711 billion dollars so what's really really cool about this is that there's a very very great blend of policies that are going to be changing and also certain policies that are going to be staying the same which is really great news because they're actually considered great policies you know so for example like keeping medicare medicaid social security the same so this is really really great news because it means that people are able to continue on to this program as well so a really great blend between policies that are related to financial financial policies, to policies related to political policies, to things related to environmental and clean energy, and just a very, very wide spectrum of different things that are going on. Um, but really, the next steps beyond this is, is that they have to vote on it inside of the House, then they have to vote it inside the Senate. Or if you're watching this into the future, it's very possible that they maybe have already voted inside of the House or have already voted inside of the Senate. And then what's going to have to happen is that they're going to have to now take this bill and start to actually physically implement these policies policies for our country. And that's the part where we're going to hopefully start to see a lot of action start to take place. And I think that's the really, really big, just big news. It's great news if you support these policies. It's obviously not so great news if you don't support these policies. But I think overall, this is the big idea, is that it's going to at least keep the country running. And that is something that I think most people in our country, on both parties, regardless of which side you support, actually very, very much agree with, which is the reason why it's expected to go through inside of Congress. So I think that's the really, really great promising news about it. But in terms of what actually physically happens, these are all things that we're going to have to see in one of the future episodes of The Kevin Show. So with that being said, 
that's pretty much what I really wanted to cover in today's update. Hopefully nothing too crazy or long. If you guys enjoyed it, hopefully remember to smash the like button if you guys haven't done so. Consider subscribing, hitting the bell for similar videos. And as always, feel free to leave a comment about honestly just really anything. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, stay safe, stay well, and hope to see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much again.